Bruce Tiersen says, I just rewatched the original Star Wars and I have a question. How did Luke get authorization to pilot an X-Wing solely on his own claim to being a great pilot and that of a single random Aussie? Well, it's not just his own claim. Biggs Darklighter says that Luke is the best Bush pilot in the Outer Rim. No question. The Incom T-65 X-Wing is made by the same manufacturer as Luke's T-16 back home. The controls were said to be nearly identical. So if you know how to fly a T-16, you should know how to fly a T-65. Also, they were just desperate and they needed everyone they could get. They just lost their last Red 5 at the Battle of Scarif. Someone get in that cockpit. So, eh, close enough for the Rebels. Hi, I'm Alex Damon. And I'm Molly Damon. And this is Star Wars Support Part 2. At Sadistic Samurai says, I have a Star Wars question for those who follow Star Wars. Oh, that's us. The stormtroopers in the original trilogy signed up for it like joining the army. They aren't clones like in the second trilogy or child soldiers like in the new trilogy. Correct, they are not clones. The clones got phased out in between uh, episodes three and four. They were kind of a mixture of, yes, people who believed in the Empire and signed up. Occasionally, they were also uh, conscripts, so people forced into the army. But no, they weren't kidnapped child soldiers the way that they were uh, in the First Order. It's really a good example of how the Empire kind of brainwashed the general public, because we see in, in The New Hope how badly Luke wants to go off to the Imperial Academy. Yeah, that's a good point. Like, a lot of people, it was just kind of the only escape route. Like, Luke didn't like the Empire, but to get off of Tatooine, he had no other choice but to join the Imperial Academy. At my name is Vador, I have a question for you. Who is your favorite character from Star Wars Legends? Hashtag Star Wars, hashtag Star Wars Legends. Star Wars Legends refers to all of the Star Wars storytelling that was basically before the Disney acquisition. So it's what used to be known as the Star Wars EU books and comics, and then the movies started to come back out with the prequels, and uh, honestly, George Lucas kind of changed a lot of stuff, and so the, the EU tried to adapt to make it all still work, but yeah, basically anything that was prior to 2014 or so got classified as Star Wars Legends and is no longer part of the canon. I jokingly say Gavin Darklighter a lot because if Biggs couldn't survive, I love uh, seeing his cousin pop in. And he is a great pilot. I do love pilots. And I also love the Legends version of Wedge Antilles just because he so far has gotten to do a whole lot more in Legends than he has in canon. I'm a big sucker for pilots. I'll go with one that's probably a lot of people's answer and say Mara Jade just because I can't get enough of awesome female Jedi. And I, I love how her story starts with her being the Emperor's hand. Evil then turns to a good guy. I think it's pretty cool. Plus, she's got a purple lightsaber. And red hair. Yeah. I am Mary Jade. <laughs> Black Lives Matter says, Question Star Wars stands. I want to start The Mandalorian, but I really don't know much about Star Wars like y'all. So is it mad connected to the films, or can I just watch it as a standalone? Like, is it hard to follow otherwise? I think they did a pretty good job of letting that be an entry point into the galaxy. Yeah, I, this is one of the things I love the most about The Mandalorian is that normies, as we might say, or people who haven't seen a lot of Star Wars, I think would love the show. And there's little bits and pieces in the show for nerds like us to get excited about, but you really don't have to have seen any of the movies or TV shows to enjoy The Mandalorian. I agree. I think that anything that is connected to other material is well explained. And if anything, it might make you more interested in some of those other Star Wars stories uh, that you could dive into. Mira Jade's publicist says, Honest question. Why does everyone in this Star Wars universe know every subclause of the Mandalorian Creed, but no one remembers the Jedi? <laughs> On this planet, we're still talking about the Knights of the Round Table. That's funny. That's a good point. <laughs> I don't think that there was like a massive smear campaign against the Knights of the Round Table to hide their history. And even then, like, I don't know the truth of the Knights of the Round Table. I've mostly heard legends and stories, which I would say probably most people don't know the truth of the Jedi in the Star Wars universe. 
I do think it's so you're right. Everyone seems to know, like, aren't you a Mandalorian? Aren't you supposed to do this or this or this? <laughs> With the finger wag, uh-huh. too. Yeah. I guess that even though the Mandalorians have significantly decreased in their number, thanks to the Great Purge, they still are around to some extent. They still seem to be known. The Jedi were completely wiped out. Also, I think that it's hard to kind of keep this in perspective, but the Jedi at their height numbered about 10,000 people in a galaxy of trillions. So not that many people really ever met a Jedi. Mandalorians numbered more. (laughs) There were more (laughs) Mandalorians than just 10,000. So I think that they were probably just more prevalent in the galaxy, uh, even when the Jedi were at their height. I'd say also just on a very basic level, uh, for instance, when... Din Djarin goes into the bar and is looking for other Mandalorians. He basically says, someone who looks like me. So they're pretty recognizable. At Abby Simp Hours says, so I have a lore question for my Star Wars moots. Has the idea of the Jedi supposedly rebelling against the Republic ever been explored? Or Palpatine's use of retroactive history to sully the Jedi? Have there been people who hate, distrust the idea of Jedi because of this? Uh, yes. They haven't done a whole lot with it. It's mostly in the books, a little bit in the comics. In Charles Soule's Darth Vader comic, like right after Revenge of the Sith, everyone seemed to be pretty pleased that the Jedi were killed off. They seemed to have bought into the lie that the Jedi rebelled against the Republic and tried to assassinate the Chancellor. Wasn't it explored a little bit in season seven of Clone Wars? Like when Ahsoka is kind of out in the world she isn't telling people outwardly that she's a Jedi, and then once the two sisters find out that she is, they're like, oh, Jedi are nothing but trouble. We don't want your help. Yes. I would. That's absolutely laying the groundwork for why people so easily were like, yeah, forget the Jedi. And I think you can see that in the films, too. I mean, only 20 years later, no one seems to know who the Jedi were. Palpatine was doing his best to just snuff out any mention of them, people were pretty quick to forget who they were. At This Is Ewan says, okay, here's a Star Wars question. With Palpatine being revealed in episode nine and revealed that Snoke was a clone, doesn't that break the Sith rule of two? Since Snoke was in technical sense, Palpatine's apprentice and Snoke had Kylo as an apprentice, that means there were three Sith. Oh boy. (laughs) Um, The rule of two is this Sith philosophy that there can only be two at any given time. In Legends, it was set up by uh, Darth Bane, which is still true in canon, but there were a bunch of Sith at one point, and Darth Bane was like, we're not getting anywhere because we keep fighting with each other. So he was like, okay, here's how we fix this. I'm going to kill everybody (laughs) except for myself, and then I'm going to take an apprentice and train them, teach them everything I know until they're strong enough to kill me. Then they're going to take an apprentice and do the same thing, and in that way the Sith will only get stronger and stronger and they'll be living in secret. Instead of just taking things by brute force, they're going to do basically what Palpatine did and rise politically and take power that way. So Snoke and Kylo Ren are not Sith. They do not follow Sith teachings. But that said, Palpatine has never really been a stickler for the rules. Yeah, he seemed to have like one apprentice at a time, but then that apprentice would have another apprentice that Palpatine would know about, and he's like, ah, whatever. Yeah, Palpatine had Maul as his his apprentice. He didn't work out, gave him the boot. Then he had Count Dooku as his apprentice, found out Dooku had Ventress, got mad at Dooku, told him to kill her. Palpatine was kind of the culmination of the Sith rule of two, and I think that in his mind he was like, it's not going to go on without me. He wanted to be the culmination of the Sith forever. It's uh, They're really bad at following their own rule. Yeah. At Does Art 72 says, Question for school. Do you think the Rebel Alliance of Star Wars is a good example of desperation forcing others to adapt and survive? I feel like it is because while the Empire had vastly superior numbers and weapons, the Rebels had a reason to fight and managed to pull off the Battle of Scarif, Yavin, Endor, Jakku, and a bunch of others. Yes, I feel like that's exactly what George Lucas has said, that the Rebels were supposed to represent the scrappy group of underdogs coming up to win against the technologically superior force that was supposed to win it's just like the vietnam war the american revolutionary war it's happened a ton of times in history 
yeah, it's it's the idea of the good guys always have a better reason to fight. They have hope on their side, as Star Wars loves to say. Yeah, I think that that's a perfect description of how that works. Let's Talk Max Mercury asks, a uh, question for my Star Wars moots. Do we think that the Mandalorian is set before or after the Battle of Jakku? They sound like they're keeping it a little vague on purpose so they can be flexible, but the initial estimates, uh, John Favreau said that it takes place about five years after Return of the Jedi, which means that would be four years after the Battle of Jakku. I think that there's room for them to mix it up, but the New Republic is pretty much established at this point in the show. I, I think it's well beyond the Battle of Jakku. The mechanic at comms open says, Star Wars fans, quick question. Is the Clone Wars movie just a sum up of the series or did it happen before? Also, Rebels is after the Clone Wars and I saw someone made an order to watch the episodes, but isn't it watchable normally? <laughs> oh boy, lot to unpack real quick. The Clone Wars movie is basically just two or three episodes of the Clone Wars crammed into a movie. <laughs> and so it doesn't sum up the entire series. It also didn't really happen before the series. It happens like four episodes into the series. As you said, someone made an order to watch the eps. You can watch it as it's listed on Disney+, Plus, but there is a chronological episode list because the series is very much out of order. Yeah, you can find that list on StarWars.com. I prefer chronological. I would watch it chronologically. Yeah, I think I would too, because it just makes more sense. It's um, a little bit of a hassle because you have to like check the list and you're going to have to change episodes. It gets to be more chronological after the first like two seasons. You're not bouncing around as much. Yeah, I'd say the most important thing about the Clone Wars movie is it introduces Ahsoka into the story. Yes. Rebels is after the Clone Wars. Yeah, Rebels takes place after the Clone Wars. Neil Rhombus says, serious question. If the Jedi are so strong, why are there so few of them? And why are they always trying to rebuild the Jedi Order? I think a lot of people think that the Force makes Jedi just like super powerful all the time. They're superheroes and they can do anything they want. Being a Jedi, accessing the Force, it's not something you can just turn on and off. Like, everyone has good days and bad days in the real world. The same is true for the Jedi. It's more a mental thing of, like, how balanced are you? How connected to the universe are you? How compassionate are you to the people around you? It's not something that it's just all the time I'm pulling Star Destroyers out of the sky. Yeah, I wouldn't even say that the Jedi are that strong. There are... A few select Jedi that are pretty strong in the Force, but overall... It's, it's a fair assumption to make, though. I never <laughs> fault anyone for acting like that's the case, because, I mean, like, the comics and uh, some of the... a lot of Legends material... Well, the video games, the video definitely. Games, yeah. I mean, yeah. the video games are video games. They want you to feel like you can do anything with the Force, but what George Lucas has said, what the movies have said, is that it's more about like keeping a, a mental balance within yourself. Around the Galaxy says, question for my canon friends. Was the Maw installation from the Legends novel Jedi Search, which also features Kessel, the inspiration for slash related to the Maw in Solo, a Star Wars story? I would say probably. <laughs> it like can't say for sure, but Solo had so many little Legends Easter eggs in it that yeah, I think they were like, ah, let's throw the Maw in there. It's a little different, at least the way we see it. In Legends, it was like a bunch of black holes near each other. In Solo, it's like just one big black hole. Yeah, I don't think they would name it the Maw unless they were trying to make that little connection. Yeah, I do think it's cool that after looking into so much trivia about all of the movies and TV shows that the Maw is not the monster, a lot of people kind of got those two confused. The the monster that attacks them and then gets sucked into the maw is the Suma Verminoth. Uh-huh. That's I, even even Han goes, is that the maw? <laughs> yeah. And it's like, nope, that that big black hole sucking it into it is the maw. <laughs> <laughs> Mark's Forever Mandalorian says, here's a question for you. Does Order 66 trigger the kill instinct for only Jedi or any nearby force users not named Palpatine or Skywalker? I've made this joke before, but I like to think 
that Palpatine basically had like a Google Doc that he was adding and subtracting names to. Mm-hmm. So at first he has like all the Jedi on this spreadsheet. And then if he starts to think like, oh, there's uh, someone I think I could get to be an Inquisitor, I'll just take them out of there. And like, oh, well, I think Anakin is probably going to be my apprentice. I'll just move him off the list. Yeah. And then anyone who maybe owed him money <laughs> added to the list. Like, yep, yeah, this person's a Jedi. This person's <laughs> definitely a Jedi. Just take them out too. I like that. But but yeah, also like Ahsoka, it's not like she leaves the Jedi Order and he's going to be like, oh, well, I guess she's safe now. Yeah. Like, nah. The Supreme Jedi says, question, why didn't Rey's body disappear when she died? What the Force and Jedi stuff say about this? What's the theory? So this is a, another hard one to talk about because Vader's body didn't die or disappear when he died, but he still became a Force ghost. And that's like a whole big thing where you're supposed to like, go through specific training to become a force ghost, but Anakin also didn't go through that. So why is he allowed to be a force ghost at all? (laughs) Um, I don't think Ben went through that training. So in my mind, I like to think of it as them being a Jedi, how they died. If they died doing something that was like funneling them into the force, like become basically, yeah, becoming one with the force. Obi-Wan kind of does it in a very brief moment on the Death Star. He kind of like, backs off and he's like okay my job is done i put luke and leia together ben kind of does it by funneling his life force to save ray luke dies or fades away shortly after doing the big force sacrifice i i do think that there's something to that i would say that they are like becoming one with the force i think that obi-wan i mean he knew he like closes his eyes he's preparing i don't know if he died because vader hit him with a saber or if he just chose to become one with the force yoda knew that he was old and sick and he may have just said like okay i'm gonna become one with the force now same with (laughs) luke and i think that it's possible that ben was like i'm going to give ray my life force and i will become one with the force he knew that he was gonna die doing that so yeah i think that there's something to that ray maybe didn't have that intent i could also say that maybe she didn't disappear because the force like the cosmic force knew like okay hold on we know something's about to happen like leave her body (laughs) yeah i like that theory the idea that she didn't automatically disappear because let's say the wills uh just knew okay ben is going to do the right thing finally um and save ray so yeah At Overlord Mikey says, I just thought about this, but if the baby Yoda creature is over 50 years old, how old is Yoda supposed to be? How do you live that long and never question Jedi teachings, which I'd like to point out are incredibly unhealthy and messed up? Guess they just had a long time to brainwash him. So yeah, Yoda is supposed to be 900 years old when he dies. I do think they're going to talk about this. I don't know how he relates to Jedi teachings because he's going to be in the High Republic era. It sounds like the Jedi are going to be very different 200 years prior to like the prequels and everything. So I think we're going to get to see maybe Yoda's mindset change over that period of time. Yeah, I've said it before, but I hope the Yoda that we see in the High Republic is like bad boy Yoda. Just, you know, sticking it to the man, questioning everything. I don't don't think that'll happen, but that would be my dream. I think you'll be different. Brian C. Wood says, I have a Star Wars question I don't think anyone has ever asked. If a funeral pyre is the traditional Jedi funeral, then how long do the mourners stand around the pyre and what happens to the ashes? Are they stored someplace and who collects them? Temple monks? I don't know how long everyone has to stand around and respectfully watch a body burn. Uh, (laughs) Maybe that is up to the Jedi and uh, how great their deeds were. (laughs) I assume the ashes would be taken back to the uh, Jedi temple. In the case of Vader, you know, Luke didn't stick around for long, and we know that Vader's mask got picked up. Yeah, it sounds like Luke just kind of set it on fire and, like, watched for a second and was like, all right, I'm going to the party. But we also know that funeral pyre wasn't the only way that Jedi funerals happened. Like, Jeddah, there there were tombs there. There were a bunch of different alternatives, so maybe Qui-Gon just had in his will. Like, I... Funeral pyre, please. Yeah, we talked recently about whether or not Jedi's had wills, and, and I, I think that 
that's plausible. The Lady of the Lake says, a question about the Rise of Skywalker I have is, was Snoke like a meat puppet that Palpatine used via the Force, or was he his own living, breathing entity that was just being manipulated? Or was he a clone grown poorly? Well, I think <laughs> you could argue that he's all of these things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's kind of true. So Palpatine does claim to be every voice that Ben Solo has ever heard inside his head. I don't think that Snoke was strictly a meat puppet. I do think that he had free will, so to speak. I don't think he was aware of who or what he was, but from what I've gathered, I think Palpatine put in, he was basically a programmed person of saying like, here's where you come from, here's what your goals are. Uh, you need to train this kid, like seduce him to the dark side, bring him over uh, and then train him. So he basically had a preloaded yeah. disposition. Yeah, I don't think he had free will, so to speak, but also I don't think he was just constantly controlled. In that same scene, Palpatine does say, like, Snoke trained you well. I, I don't know. It can go either way, frankly, but that's just <laughs> my best guess. Do you think that Palpatine purposefully made him to look mangled and scarred so that Kylo would think that Luke did that to him? There's a, a comic, The Rise of Kylo Ren, and he meets up with Snoke and says, what did Master Luke do to you? Which suggests that Snoke didn't always look that way. But then why is there a vat of those clones in The Rise of Skywalker looking already messed up? <laughs> I don't know. I think that was maybe a, a Palpatine on purpose thing. I, I think maybe he wanted another like gross looking person to <laughs> hang out with so he wasn't the only one. <laughs> Thank you so much for your questions. They were great. There were some funny ones. There were some questions that I had never even thought of before. So I, we, we always love when we're surprised by Star Wars questions. We talk about Star Wars basically every day and we're still learning new things. And it's fantastic to see so many people so interested still in the franchise. Yeah. So thank you again. And this has been Star Wars Support.